We've been having a lot of fun in the lab lately with the latest releases from QNAP. Now we've got two of them in front of you, two very different systems, but two that are pretty spectacular in their own right. This guy is the TS-1290FX, and this guy is what the, uh, my board says, it's the TBS H74TX. Now I'm cheating on those names, and I'm sure Vince didn't cut away to make it look like I knew what I was talking about. He probably will. I don't think he will. Uh, but they're really cool because they're both NVMe NAS boxes. One's a little smaller than the other, um, but QNAP is absolutely killing it with the design lately. And in fact, this one they launched last year or maybe right at CES or, or something. And I know when we saw it, we thought that's absolutely nonsense. Oh well, yeah, because you look at, so, well, it's all flash. Yeah. But compared to the other all flash platform that we had that was M.2s and he had like 2.5 gig, or the enterprise rack mount ones that are NVMe, but those, that's an entirely different segment. Well, yeah. So you normally like, okay, it's probably M.2 and it has something on the back for interconnect. This guy, it's got uh, two and a half gig. It's got 10 gig. It has Thunderbolt 4 supporter. It's Twice. It's got front and back. Yeah. And it's a little bit unique on the uh, flash support that uh, it offers. It's probably a first for a system that offers uh, E1S support. Which, well, it, the, okay, so here's the thing that's hilarious to me about this. Hilarious in a really good way. E1S support, those are designed for hyperscale customers, right? OCP, yeah. like Meta, Azure, uh, Google, all the big clouds, most of them run some variation of E1S SSDs. This is in a $1,500 at the high end. I think it goes down to $1,250, depending on, on memory and, and uh, uh, CPU selection. NAS in their NAS book line, which is like for creative pros. This is well off, the, so off the rails. Performance wise, one thing that sticks out with a lot of the enterprise models is U.2 E1S, you get some really high capacities at a very effective uh, price point. I mean, these are down affordable compared to where you'd see SATA and SAS uh, for the high capacity offerings. It is a good point because we do see that a lot of these uh, hyperscale form factors are the first ones that go into high production for Keoxia in this case, but SK or Samsung or WD or whoever are all going in on the hyperscale form factors first. That's where the volume is. And then they bring out other form factors for the enterprise and down the line. For home labbers, E1S is going to get really interesting because these things are decommissioned like crazy on eBay. Yeah, they're, I don't know if you're going to go out and buy a brand new NAS and put in used drives, but there's a lot of interesting options out there that you're not going to find for other form factors. Well, point being is that I think we're going to see, if we see more platforms like this, if we see EDSFF form factors in general get into more platforms that home labbers may eventually experience, there's going to be quite a bit of option in terms of getting enterprise flash into a little box like this. Boy, and if you look at something for capacity, well, you see uh, M.2s cap out at either four, four eight terabytes. Eight if you go QLC, I but mean, there's no there's no appetite for bigger. You can get some M. pretty nutty capacities in an E1S form factor without really going exotic. I mean, yeah, I think we've seen thirty point seven two terabyte class even in the uh, the short E1S form factor. Uh, so this one's really cool. We just put the drives in it. We still need to test this, and Vince is going to get his uh, grubby hands on this one as soon as Kevin's done benchmarking. Uh, it's designed for creative pros. He's got a lot of use cases for it as a digital imaging technician. Show those interposers, though, too, real quick. Yeah. yeah so, so it ships with these, and if you're not going to be using E1S, uh, it's lo it lets you uh, slot in a traditional M.2 SSD, and it's kind of cool. I mean... Normally, you don't get a lot of adapters with um, different uh, NAS platforms, and you might get some blanks, but it's interesting to see that they give you uh, out-of-the-box M.2 support, and if you want to, to go to uh, the uh, E1S side. I'm gonna do this yeah, I was going to wonder if you could do that from not looking. Look at that. Oh, yeah, I got it. This man. For uh, converting it, you're just removing this little bracket and screw it on. Yeah, it's two screws. It's not super convenient. It's not quite toolless or as fancy as some of the uh, two and a half inch trays are. Even in the servers, though, the Supermicro E1S server we've been using a lot lately, two screws into the drive uh, heat sink enclosure itself, right? Yeah. So anyway, that's carried forward. That's really neat. I know in the comments when we posted the first social videos about uh, un unboxing and unwrapping that, you guys want to know about Thunderbolt 4? Can we use them at the same time as the Ethernet ports? 
Can we get, how much bandwidth can we get out of this thing? That's all on the table as we start to explore that review. That's coming up. This guy is the other system that we're really excited about. We've already reviewed this. I'll link to that in the comments. This is the 12 U.2 NVMe system, also supports SATA, although I sure would hate to put SATA in this system. Yeah, this right now, going again blind, we have <laughs> 12 of these WD SN... We have 12 of these WD SN655 15 terabyte class drives, so it's right. well outfitted. So these are Gen 4 SSDs from WD. This is their uh, current shipping product. 15 terabytes, as Kevin says, 15.36. So with 12 of those in here, I don't know, some math, it's a lot. If oh, you consider, yeah, on. you're not going to try to jam it back in without I, seeing. I tried, but like it, well, just leave it on top. What are you doing? See, I got back in. Perfect. But with all that capacity, we also ran the, uh, some benchmarks with compression and dedupe, didn't you? Yeah. So this, it's a, as a platform with a 16 core CPU, 256 gig of RAM, I mean, you could do a lot of uh, stuff on this, and when yeah, you're to, talking about... Yes, to be fair, we have the insane config on this one. We have the max config, right? Two, 256, yeah. and then the epic, what is it, 7302P? Yeah, so 16-core 16 16 core, uh, yeah. processor, 32 threads, and um, with uh, dedupe compression, that is... It, now, that depends on, do you want to run Q UTS or QTS? I think ZFS is the... The hero is the, the main option here, right? Yeah, and 12 times 15 terabyte drives, I mean... You have a very uh, interesting, dense platform, and when you add data reduction on top of that, I mean, you get some pretty insane effective capacities. Yes, and this is small and designed to go portable, be on set, whatever. This is still really freaking small. Yeah. And when you consider, I know when we reviewed this too, we got the feedback, well, it starts at five grand, that's excessive, but I don't know. Wait, for, you look at for what you get in this thing. Yeah, so let's say you want to go out to a uh, white box with micro platform to get something that supports uh, even 10 bays of flash and one form factor. I mean, that box is going to be fairly expensive. Then add in the drives. Uh, like, well, you still have to add the drives here, but that server is flat. I mean, you still have to go put something on it to go do something with it, right? Yeah, and it's going to be fairly loud. It's not. It can't be something you could just like stick on a shelf in a small business. Okay, but with this, you can run virtualization. You can run Kubernetes. You can run VDI. You yeah, can run right now, I whatever. mean, as a small business option, I mean, if you're doing virtualization on another platform, yes, you might be able to run it alongside, but maybe you're working on licensing. Here, it's built into uh, the QNAP OS where you have that included license, which if you're a small business now looking at uh, different options oh on gosh. the virtualization side, it becomes fairly attractive. Surveillance, file shares, anything you could want to do. And actually, we've got a piece on some of the top apps from QNAP. I should link to that one as well. But this one has a few more other tricks up its sleeve. It's got 25 gig on board. Yeah, two ports. Two ports. So pretty quick. Do you remember off the top of your head what we saw? High level performance out of this? Uh, I think it's like up to five gig a second read. But I mean, that was all of our testing was done on the ZFS side. You can get right. even higher performance on the uh, QTS side. But we know that you guys prefer data, what, resiliency and no bit rots or whatever. Yeah, I know you're probably not running RAID zero. I mean, we do that occasionally okay. all the time. Fine. Happens. You know, have your own party. Um, but it also has a number of PCIe slots. And so one of the things that we're going to explore with this box next is the GPU support, which is really kind of interesting. So if we talk about a jack of all trades box for small businesses, if you've got an opportunity where you need a couple desktops to have access to a GPU, this offers GPU pass through. And we're pretty excited about exploring that, which also may answer the question of what this uh, Intel Extreme NUC is doing over here. It's about to give the greatest sacrifice of all its GPU. So we're going to uh, flip that over. He lost the screw. I heard that go bouncing. Oh, no, you saved it off the extra HDMI cable on the floor. Yes, yeah, so it wasn't into our camo carpet that blocks every screw, no matter what color it is. <laughs> so as Kevin takes off the screws, unfortunately, no thumb screws on this one, but probably better if it's going to be out in some small office so that uh, Randy in accounting doesn't get his hands on the internal bits of this thing. Uh, We'll take this uh, this lid off, and you can actually see it's uh, it's pretty slick inside. Oh no, not one of these. <laughs> I forgot one screw. Sorry, Kevin left the uh, security screw on there. We'd be tugging away at this thing all day. <laughs> Why do you want to make a joke there? <laughs> Voila! And just like that, uh, 
so actually, if you could look at this overhead angle, you can see the, the uh, drive back plane there. We've got our 12 drives stacked in. The uh, decent sized heat sink with blower on it, eight DRAM slots. So, what stands DRAM out? Slots. The Dynatron cooler would be kind of funny if we put the water cooler you put the liquid in cooler the in there. Yeah. All right, uh, we, we might do that. Hopefully not, though. But for, from the overall uh, overhead, you have uh, we have power connections for the GPU, so that's already in place. Um, there is, it's really designed to have a um, GPU with its own cooler attached versus a server power, or a server uh, GPU because there are some headers where you might be able to put in fans, but it's not set up for them right now. Right. Uh, but overall, I mean, for the lighter workloads, I mean, running a uh, A2000, A4000, RTX 2000. We, we thought about putting an A2 in here, but we got a little nervous thinking about the ventilation. So I think a fan or a GPU with an active blower fan on it's going to be a better decision. Again. Well, yeah, and it's going to get power directly off the power supply versus going through the motherboard. And while most server motherboards can supply up to like 70 watts of power, I'm not sure how this thing is equipped. So it's safer to go for the... Uh, the attached power option versus the motherboard. So the great sacrifice continues. Have your way with this fellow. Now this uh, extreme knock has actually served pretty good duty. It's been Jordan's jump box for the past many months, living in the rack of gear behind the rack of gear that Jordan set up when he snuck in here last time. Um, it's been killing Dylan though, and the fact that it's been sitting on the floor kind yeah, of like dylan's running into it plus it has rgb so it looks sort of uh, somewhat satanic with the red lights behind the uh, the rack the whole time uh, it's been a decent platform we haven't used it a whole lot after the review i mean to be honest it's pretty beefy and it's not exactly a power sipper with uh, all the stuff in here I'm trying to remember how the hell this thing comes apart but this is like one of those um, boxes with all the little sliders on it where you could hide your $20 bill as a kid. Yes, but now it's hiding GPUs. Yeah. Sadly, not a nesting Russian doll where there's GPU inside a GPU inside a GPU. Just one uh, A4000 inside of this bad boy. This is great video, by the way, whereas you're showing none of the action on, on it. Well, it's still in frame, I think. But well, yeah, the... but it's facing me. No one can see. Here's what you would see if we had filmed it the right yeah. way. Don't worry, I'm just doing crazy things. Uh, I do have uh, some interesting word that there's going to be some cool NUCs coming, though. And not you know, Just because Intel sold off that and, and retired, well, I guess sold the Asus and then retired the, the uh, division internally, there are some pretty neat things coming later this year. So rest assured, if you're a NUC aficionado, there shall be more. And I think those tiny form factors from Dell, HP, Lenovo, Actually, Dell HP and Lenovo uh, will still continue to be uh, to be pretty popular. All right, so you've got a full slot on the bottom there. It's got what four PCIe slots, right? Yeah, and they're all PCI Gen four. There's a three by sixteen. The middle guy is a by eight. Uh, so overall, I mean, it's pretty well equipped. And you feel confident that you picked that right slot because it's the only slot where this yes, card will fit. Yes, we had options of one slot that could fit, so I went with the slot that would fit. Always the best strategy. I actually didn't know that this had the power cables in there. That's actually pretty handy. It's like He-Man. It has the power. It has the power and the forethought of design, which is uh, sometimes lacking in these boxes. But again, I go back to, for 5K, starting on this, 49, what is it, 48, 999 or whatever yeah. at B&H, this is a really nice platform for the edge when you don't want to have to worry about managing systems. And if you're a system integrator or VAR supporting a bunch of offices, like this thing is really, really killer. Well, yeah, I mean, it's set up to be kind of, it's it's set up for a little bit of a tougher life. I mean, you look at the, uh, even the dims on this, they're all uh, zip tied in place. So it's, it's really set up where you ship it out onto a, uh, random location into someone's backyard wherever backyard. it's probably gonna hold up pretty well what are you filming those wrestling videos yes. in your backyard again that's where all the capacity goes i thought you stopped that um yes actually you mentioned the zip ties that's the first time i noticed that they were there they're holding the uh the yeah, ram so you can't pop out the release snugly clips. into place huh, that's not bad how many yeah. servers have we seen come in 
where they've been jostled in in shipping and and those things have been kind of i would say not often but uh, recently one got uh, tossed on its back so it happens it happens all right so cards in we're gonna get the lid back on and then we're gonna fire up uh the os and start messing around with the gpu pass through and getting a better idea of what we can do there through virtualization uh and through some of their other tools we're not going to do all that today but no. for now we just really wanted to highlight the capabilities of the qnap hardware design team in the engineering and just show you some of the projects that we've got going on we're uh, quite enthusiastic about what they're doing and uh, from a packaged nas solution nobody's doing it better on hardware design are they no i mean you have there's such an insane amount of features built into this thing that you really can't find something to match this without going to a full-fledged server. Yeah, and the first comment in this video is going to be security, security, security. I don't know. I mean, I know we run these. We haven't seen a lot of problems, but I haven't seen a lot of complaints recently in the last couple of years online. They've yeah, done a lot better. Yeah, I would say better. a lot of the problems that uh, hit uh, most of the NASs were people running default usernames, default passwords, simple passwords. We've written passwords, about that a lot, yeah. Opening ports to the web where you maybe didn't need to have things open. It was just a lot, of, it was the Wild Wild West for a lot of these platforms. And as soon as that got tightened down, the vulnerabilities it's, it's were shut. chopped off uh, dramatically. It's been shut down a lot. I will also give QNAP a lot of credit. They email like every 10 to 12 days, like here are the latest security bulletins, best practices for security. They've got their own subreddit where they're pushing that information out. So from a communication standpoint, they're trying really, really hard to get out in front of some of these things where they can. Yeah. All right. So we're going to put these things back to work. Uh, this thing's probably going to sit on the floor and we'll have to feel Jordan's crying texts that his jump box has been deleted. Uh, but we're going to get these things going. Benchmark that guy. This review is up. We'll have a, a report on the GPU access and what we find coming soon. But uh, great systems. And oh, by the way, this one was the first and I think still only of our best of 2024 awards, right? Yeah. Check out that review. It's worth it just to learn a little bit more about what QNAP's up to in their hardware design and why you should be thinking about this for some of those edge deployments.